This young water snake slipped into the water and went down into its depths to ambush this catfish. He pulled it out onto the shore to attempt to eat it. It must have been murky at the bottom of the lake, for the fish was a bit much for the snake, kind of like you or I trying to eat a large pizza at one bite after finding it in the kitchen at midnight. The snake didn't know what it had gotten itself into. Try as it might, the snake just couldn't fit the fish into its mouth. Snakes have jaws that can unhinge, but even when the snake unhinged its jaws, it could only get part of the snake into its mouth. It wriggled around as the snake played dead at times, at most times, and at other times, flopped around trying to get away. You can see the wound on the back of the snake, where on the back of the fish, where the snake had dug in its fangs when it captured the fish. Evidently, it came up behind it and grabbed it just above the tail. The snake was trying everything. It tried straightening out its body. It tried flipping the fish around, but it couldn't quite open its mouth big enough to swallow a catch that was simply too big for it. I didn't see how the fish could survive being out of the water this long. I didn't think it could breathe in the air, but evidently it held its breath somehow. I guess its gills were still working, still taking in some air. It certainly didn't have a nose it could breathe out of. The wound kept bleeding on the fish's back. And I thought, he's got to be a goner. He's got to be finished. But I guess there was more stamina and strength in the fish than we might give him credit for. He simply was trying to outlast this dumb young snake that took on too much. This young snake didn't understand who he was or what he could do. All he was doing was catering to his own hunger, which is a mistake in any sort of creature. We have to know exactly what we can catch and consume, or else we fail. If the fish managed to go down the snake's mouth. I didn't know how the snake could keep it inside it. It was far skinnier than the fish was. How could it possibly fit into the snake's stomach? The snake just kept on trying, kept on dragging the fish around. What a thing for the fish to endure. Poor fish. The snake should have realized its mistake and let the poor fish alone. But he kept trying. He must have been awfully, awfully hungry. This drama went on in the sunshine, seemingly forever. The fish's eye was visible at times, and he seemed alive. I didn't know how he could be alive after all this abuse and suffocation. He bled just a little now from the back, but he was still bleeding, and the marks were still there where the fish, the snake, had initially grabbed him. Sorry, sometimes I make mistakes and confuse 
the fish for the snake. Eventually, the snake let go. He must have been exhausted from the effort, and I didn't know how he was breathing. He tried different parts of the snake, the fish. After a struggle lasting over five minutes, the fish managed to break out of the grip of the snake's fangs. When it tired, it flopped across the mud flats and rushed back into the water, where it shot away so fast it was like watching the gate open at the Kentucky Derby. The snakes slithered after it and pursued the fish in the water, but it was no use. The fish was too big to eat and too fast to catch again. The snake had ambushed it and pulled it out of the dark without knowing if he could handle it. It's happened to all of us.